All right, let's answer the question. Do you lose money when you lose customers due to raising your prices? Listen, costs have been rising and you have been hesitant about raising your prices out of fear of losing customers. Let's take a look at an example of how raising your prices, even if you were to lose 30% of your customers initially. Now keep in mind, you will replace these people eventually, but since you will lose them up front, let's take a look at what that impact might look like. Now let's pretend that you have a service-based business and you currently charge $50 a month for your service and you have a reoccurring business. So you currently have 50 clients that you service every single month. Now this makes your sales around $2,500. Now your costs have creeped up and you realize that you need to raise your prices and you feel the right price is really $60 based on your calculations. Now, if everyone stayed, you would now have sales of $3,000. But your worst fears come true and you lose 30% of those existing customers. Holy cow, you just lost 15 customers. Your sales now drop from 2,500 down to 2,100. Ouch. But let me ask you, did you make less money? You see, this is a profit game and not a sales game. And many small business owners do not realize that they have a pricing problem. And what you need to do is you need to solve the profit problem first, because you can go out there and you can chase more sales, but it's not going to help your profit problem. Now, let me show you the numbers behind this particular business owner and how they lost customers, but they actually ended up making more money. Now, you might recall, we said that their monthly service was initially $50. You also know our number one calculation that we're always preaching is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. So let's break down what it was before and take a look at what it is now. Prior to the price change, the sales were $50. The costs used to run about $23, but now they're running $30, which is the main reason why they realized they needed to raise their prices. So we're going to run this number at what they are looking at prior to the price change. Now, important part here, this is a smart business owner and this business owner has been paying themselves a fair wage for the labor hours and they are included in their cost of goods, just like all of you should be doing. So therefore, now we have $50 in sales minus our cost of goods of $30. Now it's time to figure out what the expenses were running. When looking at his P&L, his expenses have been running about 25%. So he knows he needs to set aside 25% of the $50, which is $12.50. So we're going to plug that into our calculation and discover $50 minus $30 minus $12.50 leaves $7.50 profit per sale. And since he had 50 customers, before the price change, it was 50 customers times the $7.50 profit. So his profit after these 50 jobs was typically around $3.75. Now, let's take a look at the exact same calculation, but using his new pricing that he just did. But we're also going to calculate in the fact that he lost people. So let's take a look and see what the impact was. We know the sales price is now $60. The cost of goods are going to remain the same because he had already eaten that change and he's been using the $30. So we're going to use that same $30. Now, when it comes to expenses, he can either use the same $12.50 because he knows that that's what it has been running. But because he wants to really stick to using the calculation of the 25% until he gets new numbers, we're going to use 25% of the $60 and assume worst case. Now that number would end up being $15, which as you can see, it's going to be higher, but now he's going to have some cushion if needed. So plugging it into our calculation, we're looking at $60 minus $30 minus $15 says that his new profit is $15. But you recall, he also lost 15 customers. So ultimately, he only had 35 customers the very next month. So let's use that number, 35 customers times $15. His profits were $525. Oh my gosh, the profits went up, even though he had less customers and did less in sales. This is why I tell people that you have a pricing problem because you have a profit problem. It's not about chasing more people. You'll notice here that if he fixed the pricing, he actually fixed his profits. Now let's work forward a little bit. Let's assume this business owner now goes out and replaces those 15 customers at his new pricing. 
Now he's going to have 50 customers at $15 in profit and his new profits are $750 versus the $375 he had prior using the old pricing. Not to mention that his sales are also up because now he has 50 customers times the $60 and his sales are up to $3,000 versus the original $2,500. But here's the thing, more sales at $50 wasn't going to solve his problem. Better pricing was gonna solve it. He would have to grow by 100 new customers just to hit the same 750 in profits that he is doing today with only 50 customers using the new pricing and the new profits. So please know that raising your prices might cause you to lose sales, but it doesn't mean you're going to lose profits. This is a profit game, not a sales game. Way too many small business owners would actually go out and hire people to help them out so they can hit that 100 new customers and still not make any more money. So before you hire and chase more sales, make sure that you're looking at your pricing and expenses first, have the best prices for the business, and then go chase more sales. This way you maximize your profits. Yes, you might lose people in the beginning, but you're going to get them back at a much higher ticket and you're going to make a lot more money without having to hire more people or work more hours.